So Meg, it's wonderful to have you here. Please welcome welcome back to State College. Thanks Thank so much, and I'm here. I'm so glad to be here at the Coyle Center once again. It's a, a wonderful program, and, wonderful. and really glad to speak with you. Wonderful. Thank you. So, so you're an expert with some some background and some experience in this domain. So, um, whenever we have visiting experts such as yourself, we like to ask them some questions and, and poke around on some ideas that we're trying to get answers to and, and get some broader perspectives. And um, this series of questions is going to focus around the issue of retention. Um, I was reading recently where the, uh, this, the standard percentages are about 72 or so completion rates it, it clumped all together, which, is a, which means we've got a, a long way to go to get more students. Um, successful in our classes. And I, I'm going to ask you three questions. Um, the first is going to be about what that means to you. What does retention, how do you frame it, how do you think about it? The second question would be if you had one, one issue uh, that you think could affect retention, is there a way that you could um, create a, a solution? And it could be a big solution. No problems with money. We'll give you all the money you want in time. <laughs> And last question is, okay, we don't have all the money and time. I was just kidding. So if you had to pick one thing, what might one thing be? So, so let's start with the first one. If you could just tell us, what does that issue of retention mean to you? Great, Larry. Um, I think you've framed a really important question and one I think that many universities are struggling with today. Um, you know my context. I come from an adult-serving, adult-friendly institutions, predominantly online or blended experiences. So my definitions of retentions tend to focus more on degree completion and also certi certificate completion. Okay. So whatever the student sets out as a goal for what it is that they want to complete. So I, I think um, for a long time I haven't looked at it as course completions. I think earlier on I looked at retention as, you know, can we improve X course or Y course and more specifically working on the course. Um, I think in the most recent history we've been looking at degree attainment and the problem with the, the fact that many adults start degrees and don't complete degrees. Those statistics are much worse um, than you're describing with the 73 percent. You know, in the adult serving industry if you get 50 percent that's pretty good. I, you know, as a previous college president, provost, now a faculty member, when you say only half of the people who start this out complete, it's just not a statistic that I can feel good about um, in the field. So I think it's something we definitely have to work on. And you know, there are many, many causes um, that hurt the, the ability to have the student complete. So this, this is really interesting, your perspective. Uh, it's not one I'd thought of before, is the shift from thinking about sort of a short-term goal, which yeah. is the course, to thinking about the longer trajectory and try to keeping students in that. Um, as you made that shift in time and thinking about uh, the differences, uh, and then you, as you said, you know, we might look within a course and it might be 73%, but within a program is 50%. That's, right. That's a huge, again, a shift yeah. or adjustment. As an administrator, as a senior level administrator, how did you reconcile that within your institution? Well, I think we we look at many elements, and um, you know from your work that you you look at course completion, but you also look at what is the student's goal for how they're moving oh, forward. Okay, right. You know, and when you're working with the adult learners in context, you're you're much more likely to say there are external factors, there are internal factors, um, and I think an important part of our work as administrators is to look at the national and state context. So what, what are external people thinking about our capability as higher education of, uh, administrators to carry out our mission? Um, and how do we convince them that the goals that we have are reasonable goals um, for moving forward? Course completion is one of those. Um, the student supports another of those. Um, the cost of education, recognition of prior learning. There are many areas that, that we can work on. So Meg, would you sort of presume that when a student comes into a program, their ultimate goal most would be degree completion? So that's usually it's, certificate or degree yeah, completion. Okay. Um, and so it's not uh, one you, course here or a course there. They're typically looking not. at a yeah, degree. Yeah, general, okay. yeah. And, and if we can work to identify those who are not um, on that track to make it clear what they're looking for. You know, part of that is generated by financial aid 
um, agreements, loan policies, and sure, others that sure. push a student in that direction. So you, you've uh, hinted already that you've got like one particular area, it, it, and then maybe a solution. Yeah, hey, you know, and I think you could hit many, mm. many areas. Um, one of the things that I'm particularly interested in recently is equipping faculty with the best resources so that they can do their job. Um, and I've been interested in adaptive learning for this reason. Um, I think the time that faculty have had to, to really understand who the students are in their section um, of a course. So whether that's a, you know, a 400 student section that's being blended or it's a 25 student online section, the faculty member needs to have tools to help them to assess at the beginning of the study where each of those students are. So if I had you know, a limited time or money, I would get the resources together that would give the most information on a dashboard to that faculty member. But not just the dashboard of sort of, you know, what are the students writing skills, what's their math preparedness. But because I work with adult learners, I'm also interested in the faculty member being able to start with that student where she is. You know, if she has experience in business, she st shouldn't be starting you know, with a typical 20-year-old, she should be starting with somebody who has solid experience. If she's working in healthcare, the faculty member should know in advance, hey, I've got stu five mm. students here who work for, in the hospital system. You know, so I'd like, I'd like there to be the capability for the faculty member to have enough information in a way that's easy for them to read and assess, and then they can adapt their courseware mm. as they move forward. Um, I think in the, the adaptive industry, we're just learning where we are in this industry. So getting those skills and capabilities of the students to allow them to move through computer systems a little bit, then the faculty member can jump right in and she or he can work with that student to say, this is where this individual student needs help, or this is where this individual student is soaring and she needs to to you know, be able to have more information that she can work on? Or do I have a group of learners who I need to just skip this next module? You know, I don't need this module. This group is different, so I want to move forward. So I'm, I think we have software now that's getting us there. Um, I think it's not scalable. I think it's expensive. I think it takes a lot of time. But I think if we could get that moving, particularly with first year courses, it would help a lot. So if we were to take one small step toward that, I, I suspect we're collecting some of this information, yeah. but maybe we're not doing a great job of right. getting it in the hands. Would that right. be a step yeah. forward? Yeah, part of it is that the, the vendors, the, the industry's not mature. Um, so that the vendors are working with a number of colleges. Uh, colleges need to work together. Mm -hmm. um, as typical, I think, you know, we can work together so that we are developing adaptive software that each of us are using, um, testing it out and moving it forward. I think an initial step is to be able to make that um, investment. And some of it takes some external funding, you know, whether it be institutions that have large scale um, and can afford to develop these types of resources. Um, you know, if you look at you know, a lot of institutions that have large student sections, um, they can see the opportunity to have the improvement um, in those industries. So I'm excited about that area of adaptive. I'm not sure it's a solution for everyone. Um, for me, to bring it back to the student and his or her success, what I think is important is recognizing that student where she or he is. Yeah. And then being able to save them either time or money moving forward with that. So if they get an adaptive learning platform at the beginning of their program that allows them to then perhaps not take 120 credits for a degree right, to right, be right. able to save you know some of that time or money resource yeah. and then the second part of that is equipping the faculty member yeah. with the tool she needs yeah. to work with that student you know I think that's that's an interesting observation a lot of the adaptive learning things that I've been reading about and listening to have to do a lot with the student and the system adjusting to the student, you're flipping that around yeah. and saying the faculty, faculty also need needs access to that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to see you, Meg. Thank Thanks, you. Larry.